Our Bible word is John 20, verse 13. Then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. So this is the narrative about Jesus' resurrection appearances. And central here is the role of Mary Magdalene. And what's quite significant here, historically speaking, is that in the Gospels, women are the first to have seen the risen Jesus. Or it's either Jesus appears himself to them, or it's angels who announce to the woman that Jesus has risen from the dead. And this is very unusual in the first century context. Because generally speaking, women's testimony was not trusted. That they thought that they were rash, that they lacked substance, that they were irrational, at times hysterical. Not that they were untruthful, it's just that women's testimony were not reliable because they go and make rash conclusions, etc. And for example, if we go to Josephus, he's a Jewish historian that lived towards or wrote towards the end of the first century. And he wrote in his Antiquities of the Jews, he said the following, But let not a single witness be, cre be credited, but three or two at the least. Of course, that's a normal biblical injunction. And those such whose testimony is confirmed by their good lives. But let not the testimony of women be admitted on account of the levity and boldness of their sex. So, not only him. It was generally thought that women were their, their levity. That was the lack of their substance. Their rash conclusions. Women's testimony cannot be trusted. Philo, a, a Jewish philosopher from Alexandria, he also said women are irrational and they follow bestial passions and all those kind of things. So quite rightly, if you are a woman looking at this, you, you could rightly be offended. But that was the common idea of the time. Also, the pagan critics of Christianity, they said Jesus' accounts of resurrection cannot be trusted because it's women who told us who started the story. And how can you trust them? For example, there was this pagan philosopher, Calcis, and we know his writing from the early church father, Origen, in a work called Against Celsus. And this is what Calcis said about the resurrection accounts. He said, But who really saw, he's speaking of the resurrection, a hysterical woman, as you admit, and perhaps one other person, both deluded by his sorcery, in other words, Jesus' sorcery, were all so wrenched with grief at his failure that they hallucinated him risen from the dead by a sort of wishful thinking. So there's Calcis. He's referring to Mary Magdalene specifically as this hysterical woman. Also, there's this other pagan philosopher from the second century, Porphyry. And he also like, questions these resurrection narratives. Like he, he says, Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene a prostitute, by the way, Mary Magdalene is not a prostitute. She's not identified that way in the New Testament. But he says, Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene, a prostitute who came from some horrible little village and had been possessed by seven demons. And another Mary, equally known, probably a peasant woman and others who were of no account. So who cares about what this woman said? <laughs> you can't trust him. Then he also, Porphyry also asks, Why did this Jesus not appear to Pilate, or to the king of the Jews, Herod, or to the high priest of the Jewish people, or to many men at the same time? So it's, why appear to a woman, first of all? In the first, I mean, if you wanted to convince an audience in the first century to write that Jesus appeared first to a woman would not be... <laughs> The good, a good way to go about convincing people that Jesus has risen from the dead. So obviously these accounts of Jesus appearing to a woman, especially Mary Magdalene playing such a prominent role, it must be based on tradition. It must be based from, from memory, from the, the story that was told right from the beginning that this is what happened. 
This is not something that would be invented later on because for most people it would have said, what? Women saw him first? No, no, no. So obviously it also testifies to the truth of the narrative that something like this really happened, that Jesus really did first appear to a woman. And in John 20, the focus is on Mary Magdalene. Of course, the author is aware that other women were was also there, but he focuses on Mary Magdalene. And chapter 20, generally speaking, it recounts various responses to Jesus and how differently people came to believe in the resurrection. For example, there's the beloved disciple who believed when he saw the grave clothes. Mary believed when Jesus called her by name. The disciples believed when they saw Jesus. And Thomas, old doubting Thomas, he only believed when he actually probed the body of Jesus. But the gospel also praises those who believe in the resurrection without seeing. Now our media textual unit is verses 1 to 18. That is Mary at the tomb. Mary Magdalene. She, also with other women, it's implied in the next verse where it speaks of we. She came to the tomb early, so obviously she was distressed. She couldn't sleep. She was eager about the Lord. And now she comes to the tomb because, you know, she, she wants to... A devotion. It's an expression of devotion to Jesus. And now she arrives at the tomb and she sees the stone is removed. And the body of Jesus has been moved. And now she runs off to Peter. And she tells him, hey, they've taken the body of Jesus. Then Peter runs to the tomb, also the beloved disciple. And it says the beloved disciple ran faster than Peter. We may speculate that the beloved disciple was a young man, maybe like in his young teenager at this stage. And he outstripped Peter to the tomb. Eventually Peter arrived and then he went in. He saw the clothes were there. The face cloth of Jesus was rolled up neatly. And then the beloved disciple entered and then and also says he's the first one that believed. In other words, that came to, there was a realization, ah, Jesus has risen from the dead. So then Peter and the beloved disciple, they leave. But Mary remains behind. And in verse 11, it says, Mary stood by the tomb weeping. And she also stooped down to look into the tomb and looked into the tomb. And then she saw two angels sitting on either side. That's in verse 12. And she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And we come to our Bible word now. Then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. So it was not just a devotion to Jesus. It was also about the idea of giving a person an honorable burial. It was a big thing at this time. If a person wasn't buried properly, his body is gone. It, was, it, was a, it brought serious dishonor on him as a person. It was a way of condemning that person, that, he, that his memory must be forgotten, that he's accursed. So Jesus or Mary didn't want that to happen to Jesus. He must have a proper burial. So the angels now said to Esther, why are you weeping? In verse 14, it says there, now she turned around and she saw Jesus, but she doesn't recognize that it's Jesus. We could also think of Jesus appearing to those two on their way to Emmaus. They had a long conversation with Jesus and they did not recognize him. So this is this mysterious nature about the resurrection body of Jesus. But Jesus now also said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? So in a way, Jesus is repeating the question of those two angels. And she, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Again, this concern to give Jesus a proper burial. Then Jesus said to her, Mary. And then she recognized this as Jesus. And she addresses him as Rabboni, in other words, teacher. And then Jesus also tells her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, 
I am ascending to my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. So two significant things happening here. Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, first appeared to women. Yes, yeah, specifically to Mary Magdalene, the person whom Jesus cast out seven devils from her, seven demons. Second important thing, she is the first with a commission to go tell others that Jesus has been raised from the dead. So it's quite a significant thing yeah, that happened. And with the context of the first century, it's quite remarkable that this is being told you. It would not be. It would not have been invented if this was not something that has really happened. Because to base this kind of testimony on a woman's testimony, would have been, nobody would have thought of doing that. It would have just discredited the whole narrative. That yeah, the gospel stories tell it the way it is, the way it happened. Jesus first appeared to a woman. And secondly, woman, yeah, Mary Magdalene specifically, who received the commission, go tell others about the resurrection. So, this is Jesus. The focus of this narrative is on Mary Magdalene, a woman who was the first person to see the resurrection, re resurrected Jesus, along with other women, if you follow the other Gospels. She's also the first to receive the commission to proclaim this resurrection to others around them.